I've been doing these HDMI output videos for older retro systems for years now on this channel, and it seems like they tend to get harder and harder and harder based on the, the run that I, I've done here. But I was let off the hook a bit with the last one. While it wasn't an HDMI out video, it was video output for a system that didn't have it. And that was the original DS, which was actually pretty easy, all things considered. But now we're going to be tackling probably the most difficult system I've had to add video output to, and that is the new 3DS XL. Now, when I was going through picking this out, I realized that this is marked on the extreme difficulty side, and as I got further and further into it, I understood exactly why that was, and well, I'm going to show you here today. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and we're going to start today with this video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Factor. Now you can skip the grocery store lines and have fresh, never frozen meals delivered straight to your door. Simply choose from a menu of over 35 meals each week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more. These meals show up ready to heat and eat with just a couple of minutes in the microwave, so you can get on with your day in no time. I like to have a factor meal for lunch if I'm running a bit late since prepping is simple and cleanup afterwards is a breeze. Being able to change up my order every week is great too, letting me try new meals and some food varieties even for the first time. Factor is cheaper than takeout, way more delicious, and includes add-ons you can pick from like cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, and more. And hey, heading into spring, now is a good time to get on top of your goals today with Factor. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SPAWNWAY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com or click the link below and use code Code Spawnway 50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's start with where I got this kit from as a year and a half or so ago. I was actually suggested this by a person as Retro RGB did an article on an, a 3DS XL video output. And then we also had it for the new 3DS XL. And that was from optimize.ath.cx. And the order process here was a whole thing as they had to ship it out from Japan and you have to like fill out the, the order form and, and do all kinds of stuff. I, I think I even had to like convert currency over so that it was able to deposit their account. Again, there's a lot of steps here to make it work from what I remember, but I was able to get it done. And as you can see, I did order the, it was a new 3DS XL capture kit and the difficulty is the highest they had marked at level five. So naturally, I, I had to take a shot at this one, so I ordered it. Took a couple of months to get here, but when it did, well, I was, I was in for a surprise. And that's because I was not expecting the kit to show up where the ribbon cables had to be manually sliced out of their template. This was... This was an odd one for me. I've never seen this before in any kits I've bought in the past with cables like these. They recommend using some precision scissors. I didn't have access to what they were showing there. So what I ended up doing was using uh, just like sharp razor blades and just regular scissors for some of the larger uh, pieces to cut out. And I was able to get it done. But it was not without being nervous most of the time because some of these traces are extremely close together. Even with a razor blade, I was cutting it pretty close. However, after taking my time, and again, it was a lot of time, I was able to get both of these cables separated and cut up well enough to where they're supposed to bend. And I noticed that there, there are technically two sets of cables that they have in this, in this rectangle that they sent. So if I had cut a trace on one, technically I had a backup, but certainly not a good first impression. Normally these cables are pre-cut out and you just kind of pop them out of, of the larger uh, piece here that would hold it, but not here. Anyway, with that all sorted out, now I just need to break out the new 3DS XL that I'll be adding video output to. And I have this new 3DS XL Galaxy Purple Edition, which looks really cool. And I figure, you know, we'll add video out to this guy, but I do have to carve up the shell somewhat. And mostly that's in the, the plastic underneath the back cover. So after removing the typical Phillips head screws, getting that loose, I have to break out the Dremel. And mostly the idea here is we have to cut out a spot so that our board, which will be pulling video from the main board itself for the 3DS and then outputting it to what looks like a micro USB. Unfortunate that they're using just a, a standard USB port here. I would have preferred it USB-C, at least for the kit that I received in this case. Maybe they're updating it as they've gone along since I had ordered this one last year. 
But either way, that's sort of what we're working with. Anyway, after cutting out the rectangle, this does fit in pretty well now. Unfortunately, I was off center a bit with the back cut, so I have quite a bit of space around the USB port where I plug in the cable, but it's functional, it's fine. The instructions do list the next step as soldering your ribbon cables to this main board. And after going through it, it kind of makes sense considering we'll be folding and essentially having the ribbon cables run around the 3DS board with this sitting on the opposite side of the main chipset that we're trying to pull information from. So it was very easy to do that. Some flux on both the ribbon cable and then the board after that couple solder points here and there it was good to go this was the easiest part when it comes to soldering uh, the worst part was coming up from there it was just the typical disassembly of the 3ds where we have to take all the different phillips head screws out of the motherboard inside and then unplug things like the the thumbstick the card reader the top screen microphone home button there, there's a lot of stuff okay that plugs into the the 3ds board but once all that is out i'm able to then free the board and we can flip it over and look at the other side with the the metal covering that houses our main chipset so what we need to do here is after removing that metal cover we have to clip the guides around that side of the chipset on the 3DS because we're going to have our ribbon cable run underneath of the metal guide and run right up against that chip. In fact, there are components right alongside of it that we are soldering this cable to, which you can see here. And these are very, very small. So what I had to do was very, very carefully kind of scratch away some of the, the, the glue stuff you see around it, the cover. At which point I was able to solder and have it stick to each one of these tops of the components. And you can see the ribbon cable kind of sliding in here to line up. And it's kind of hard to convey just how small this is. So here's an image with an SD card kind of off to the side. Yeah, that, this is not fun. I had to break out actually a scope for this to, to zoom in because it was... I mean, really difficult to see. Otherwise, some of the smallest soldering I've done in quite some time. And then, of course, to make things even more difficult, on the other side of this chip, so uh, like adjacent to where I was soldering here, I had to solder more points down, and these had to go directly through the ribbon cable. So unfortunately, I wasn't pushing it up against the, the component. I had to rest it on top, and it had to line up multiple points. And this was a headache just trying to get Because you had to look through these little pinholes, basically, to see if you have that shiny part on the other side. And it had to be all the different pinholes at once, basically. I was able to eventually move it into place and start tacking it down, but it wasn't without trial and error. In fact, at one point, I thought I had it perfectly set, and then I went to test with a multimeter, and I was not getting any kind of connection or resistance to measure uh, that connection on two of the points, and yeah, it was one of these through holes, so not fun at all to make that work, but eventually I was able to, and once you have that, it then folds around the board, and on the other side, you see we have our board that we added in, and with some double-sided tape, managed to sit it in place. I still have another cable, this one is for sound, and then we have a ground cable. The sound, ground cable, those are all perfectly fine, no problems there, much, much easier than what I just dealt with, and then... At this point, we're ready to fit it up and test it out. So the board goes back in, and the nice thing is, really the, the only place that we have anything that would cause issues with the system closing up is on the opposite side where we already cut that square out. Everything on the other end of this where we have the, the main chip and stuff, it's a flat ribbon cable that is not going to be in the way at all. So after screwing everything down here and then closing it up on this side, you can see the unfortunate hole that I clipped up for the micro USB not great. Again, functional though. And in fact, when plugged up and turned on, it pops up on screen. There is a program that you have to download from, from their site that they've provided here, as well as a driver that needs to be installed for Windows, which is what I had used here was Windows 11. But once I did that, it came up and there are a lot of options. So I did run into an issue with the bottom screen where it just looks like the color scheme is off. It could be some of the soldering I need to work on, but the top screen 
is perfectly fine. It actually looks great here. So most people I know worry primarily about the top screen on their 3DS being recorded because that's where most of the action is. But the fact that we are we have a dual screen setup, I would like to be able to record both with good quality. So I'll be going back and working on this as I have time. But for now, let's take a look at what we can do with the top screen. And as you can see, the footage is really good in terms of the quality. And the way I would do this is you can hold your 3DS and just play it normally, and it'll show up on screen. So if you are someone who's looking to maybe stream Pokemon games, I know these are really, really big in the Pokemon community to have, so you can play with real hardware, you know, your real cartridge, all of that. And I do think it's a better experience to be able to just kind of hold your 3DS while you're playing the game, and then recording your footage, whether it's, again, for B-roll or for streaming. It just feels much more natural than using an emulator and then clicking around with the mouse to simulate the touchscreen. And then, of course, some of the weird stuff that can happen with emulation for the 3DS, which is a quirky system as it is, uh, but being able to instead use the actual hardware where you shouldn't have any of those weird issues uh, should just give you a better overall experience and better overall footage. Although I will admit I've seen some of the very impressive stuff that emulation can do if they have that perfect basically and then you can upscale and, and add in texture files, all kinds of stuff. But still, something about having that crunchy, natural 3DS experience, it's hard to match. Do I recommend you going out, picking up one of these and trying it yourself? Probably not. I mean, 95% of people most likely saw the steps involved here and say, nah, I'm good. And then the rest might try it, but then even a percentage of that will be able to get it to the finish line. It's just, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, even with a kit like this that is laid out in front of you, whether it's folding cables around, cutting up the plastics on your new 3DS XL, getting the board to sit just right, or even soldering down to some very, very small components on the board. It, it, it's a whole thing. And then you have to make sure you cut the ribbon cables out correctly. So really, really cool to see that this kit is at least out there and available, but it certainly needs quite a bit of work to become something that I could even recommend to someone from the parts side of things. And wouldn't you know it, after I went through all of this with what I would call just an absolutely ridiculous modification now for the 3DS, especially in hindsight, yeah, there seems to be a better new 3DS XL capture card that I could install. And in fact, I might go that route because looking at what the, what mods uh, Modsville linked here, it seems to be more feature complete. It does include USB-C as well as charging while outputting video. So let me know down in the comments. Maybe we can install this one and see if it's something that's maybe a bit more attainable for the installation for the average person out there. Still appears to be soldering involved, but nowhere near the level that I just went through. Let me know what you guys thought about this down below with the new 3DS XL. Technically having video out capabilities, just uh, not the easiest path to get there. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.